hydroponics. It's a modern and efficient way of producing lots of vegetables, flowers, fruits without the use of soil. Sure, it's high tech, but in this video, Don will show you a relatively simple system that he has designed and installed here in the Calyx Garden. So keep watching and he'll take you through the stages of construction, installation, and the growing of our first crop of lettuce. Hello everyone, I'm Don and I have the pleasure of sharing with you the installation of the first hydroponic system in the Calyx Garden. As Thelma just said in the introduction, hydroponics is the growing of crops without soil. So first, let me share with you some of the regularly used systems. Nutrient film technique, where seedlings are inserted in a narrow pipe or channel and diluted nutrient solution is periodically passed through, through this channel to feed and hydrate the roots. Another system is aeroponics, where plants are suspended in air and their roots periodically sprayed with a high pressure mist containing nutrients, oxygen, and water. A third system is called ebb and flow. In the ebb and flow system, plants are grown in trays supported above a nutrient reservoir. The nutrient solution is pumped periodically into the trays, then allowed to drain back into the reservoir. In the Calyx Garden, we have installed a modified version of the ebb and flow system in which the trays float on, on the reservoir of the nutrient solution and the nutrient solution is circulated periodically. This is called the floating raft system and its main advantages are one, it's easy and inexpensive to construct, two, easily expandable, and easy to operate. So let's get started. First of all, you need to assemble materials to construct your system. A basic system will require the following, a nutrient reservoir, materials such as high density plastic or rubber pond liner to make the system watertight, a pump and timer, an aeration system, something similar to that used in a fish tank, three quarter inch or one inch PVC water pipe for your plumbing, two inch thick styrofoam to make the floating trays. We have constructed our nutrient reservoir with two inch by six inch by 12 foot long boards, but other suitable materials may be used provided it is sturdy enough to contain the nutrient solution. The quantity of board and water pipes required will depend on how big you wish to make your tank. Our nutrient tank is 30 inches wide by 130 inch long and about 6 inches deep. It has two compartments. One 30 inches by 30 inches for the germination of seedlings and the other 30 inches by 100 inches for the floating trays. Optional accessories for this system may include 1. An inline water filter, 2. Inline ultraviolet water purifier, and 3. A water chilling system. If your daytime temperature is generally above 30 degrees Celsius, the chiller unit can be used to keep the nutrient solution at an optimum temperature of about 22 to 25 degrees Celsius. If a chilled water unit is used, the nutrient reservoir must be insulated with, an, with a suitable material to minimize the absorption of heat from the environment, thus minimizing the need to run the chiller unit. Here are the steps in constructing your unit. 1. Construct the nutrient reservoir and install insulating material if used. 2. Line the system with watertight materials and test for leaks. Cut and fit the floating rafts. Use rubber seals around the rafts 
to minimize penetration of sunlight into the water. This guards against the growth of algae in the, in the nutrient solution. Four, drill holes in the rafts with spacings to suit the crop you intend to grow. Five, install the filter, pump, timer, chill water unit, and purifier, and complete the plumbing system. Six, assemble the control panel and test system for proper operation. Seven, fill the reservoir to the correct level and add nutrients to the recommended concentration and pH. Here is what our completed system looks like. The circulation pump maintains uniform concentration of the nutrients and it is essential if you are going to use the chill water system. Note that the aeration system is absolutely essential for maintaining proper oxygen level in the water. The water purifier removes pathogens and bacteria from the nutrient solution. Whilst the optional accessories are not absolutely necessary for your system to operate, we had installed them to provide us with the flexibility of experimenting with different growing conditions. Useful equipment to have include a conductivity meter and a pH meter. When your system is ready, transfer the seedlings from the seedling trays to the floating rafts. And here, we are using romaine lettuce as our test crop. Here are our romaine lettuce seedlings after only one week. Note that we had installed plastic covering over the seedlings to protect them from heavy rainfall. These are the plants after two and a half weeks. The lettuce grew very quickly and were ready for reaping three weeks after transplanting. In our first crop, we had produced about 70 heads of lettuce, but these are more than we could reasonably consume by ourselves, so we gladly share them with our friends and relatives, but they were lovely. I'm so excited about the prospect of our next crop. Thanks, Don. We do make a good team, don't we? He builds it and I use it. This is new to us in the garden and already I've started looking into other options for using it, which we'll bring to you in subsequent videos. But since I'm hoping that some of you will want to grow along with us, I think it's a good time for me to share some of the observations that we made from this first test run. First, we noticed that there was a low incidence of algae growth on the upper surface of rafts. This is possibly due to the nutrient solution escaping through the planting holes. So going forward, we will ensure a tighter fit of seedlings into the planting holes. Uh, another observation, um, there's a need to protect the young plants from damage during heavy rains because halfway through our experiment, we had to erect a makeshift uh, covering from the rains. And third, three, you saw it, there was some overcrowding, so we'll need to be a bit more careful about the spacing. So happily, although we grew the crop outdoors, we had no pest problems and the water purifier no doubt contributed to the absence of diseases. We hope you found this video informative and interesting. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And this is a good time for me to introduce our text on protected agriculture, 
which starts off with the theoretical aspects, but then takes you through step by step how to install various structures, how to grow the crops in the structures, and we hope you check it out on Amazon and Book Fusion. So until next video, when we bring you another interesting um, gardening experience, this is Thelma saying bye-bye.